Today is April 3rd, 2024. I'm David Berlin, and this is the Blockchain Journal podcast coming to you from NFT NYC, a big conference taking place on the west side of Manhattan in New York City at the Jacob Javits Center. It's a conference that's all about NFTs, an annual conference. And standing with me is Nicola Sebastian. He's the chief content officer at a fairly big player in the blockchain business, The Sandbox. So, uh, Nicola, thanks very much for joining me here on the Blockchain Journal podcast. Amazing. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. And by the way, for those of you who are watching, uh, we'll put up some QR codes right after this the interview that uh, so you can connect with Blockchain Journal, you can connect with me, and you can connect with Nicola. So, um, I, you know, we've been following the sandbox for a couple of years now on Blockchain Journal, but we haven't actually had a chance to meet with you guys and find out what you're all about and help our listeners and our uh, our audience understand what they can, what the sandbox can do for big enterprises and big brands. So let's start there. What is the sandbox? Amazing. So the sandbox is a metaverse platform. Essentially, uh, you have a large map uh, where with a variety of plot of lands, all of those are NFT, and users can connect through those plot of land and enter the sandbox, essentially accessing a variety of different experiences in music, in entertainment, in gaming, anything you can think of. It is a great way, a great way for brands to access the metaverse, to access a metaverse-friendly, Web3, UGC-friendly audience, and to express themselves in different ways than the traditional media. Okay, when we talk to a lot of other companies, a lot of them are NFT platforms. You're the first metaverse platform that we're talking to, and the idea of a metaverse is kind of scary because a lot of big brands and enterprises have never heard of the metaverse, uh, may have heard of it on TV or something like that. So Sandbox essentially is a metaverse provider, like a third party provider that they can turn to these big brands and enterprises to build their own metaverse, their own branded metaverse, uh, an immersive experience that their customers can enter and explore and maybe get to understand the brand a little bit better through a virtual world? Yes, I will say we are our own metaverse and I can envision a future where there's a few dominant metaverses like there's a few dominant mega cities in the world. Uh, and within hours, you can then join a neighborhood dedicated, for example, to your favorite brand like uh, Lacoste or your favorite artist like Snoop Dogg and experience one or a variety of uh, digital moments tied to him or them. Okay, so let's say I'm Snoop Dogg. I wish I was Snoop Dogg, but I'm not, okay. Uh, or I was the CEO or chief marketing officer at Lacoste. I would go to the Sandbox, that's the name of your company. I would go to you and I would set up some land, some branded land, and build this immersive experience. How, how do I go about doing that? Yeah, you will contact us. You will likely acquire uh, one or more plot of lands from us, and then you will build on it. We can help build. We have uh, proprietary studios. We have over 200 trusted partners that can build for you, or you, can even wanna, you might even want to learn to build internally through your teams or directly. Uh, and then you will build one or more experiences uh, tied uh, to the identity of the artist or of the company. As I said, one can be gaming, one can be uh, about learning, one can be a virtual concert even. Uh, through all that, you have a way to outreach to your players and to your users and to your fans and to have uh, and also a way for them to interact with each other in your community in a completely different way. Okay, so... Big brands can build these very kind of virtual and immersive experiences, and they can be a variety of types. Could be a game of some sort. Could be, as you said, a virtual concert. Could be just about anything, a, a museum. We could take a tour around a museum. That's I think that's something that you could do. So uh, um, where does blockchain come in? What's the role of blockchain in all of this? Well, first, our land are NFT tokens that you can own, resell, and keep expanding. Our avatars and a lot of uh, um, the assets that we offer are NFT tokens. Uh, and uh, finally, we are powered uh, by our own token, SAND, which uh, is uh, one of likely the most important token out there in blockchain and Web3. Okay, so uh, 
you talked about a variety of different asset types, like avatars. So let's say I decide that I'm going to, I'm a big brand, and I want to set up some land. I would come to you, and I would buy a plot of land, and I would start to build my virtual experience. I'm assuming you provide the tools to do this? We have a uh, no-code, two no-code tools, actually. The Game Maker is to build experiences, and uh, VoxEdit is to build assets and avatars. VoxEdit, that's V-O-X-E-D-I-T? Okay, great. And so, so people can serve themselves, but you said you mentioned earlier that you also uh, have partners that can, you know, like resellers or whatever who can build it for you. Uh, basically the equivalent of systems integrators that enterprises are already familiar with. But, um, so uh, I build one of these experiences, I, I buy some land from you, I can buy um, one plot of land, two plots, how does that work? Yeah, you can buy one to too many. We can, uh, you can buy them in the secondary market, you can buy them directly. We're con continuously running uh, land sales. I believe now we have one uh, tied to Korea, for example. And based on the land you will buy, you will be in certain neighborhood associated with brands, uh, uh, entities, uh, or artists that probably share something with you. Okay, so there's areas of common interest, uh, plots of, you know, multiple plots of land around some common interest like exactly. music or maybe automobiles or something like that. I'm, I'm starting to get an idea of this. Uh, so I'm a big car company and I buy a plot of land uh, that's going to be mixed in with a lot of the other car manufacturers. And uh, when I create this virtual experience using your tools or I have somebody create it for me, then what do I do? I invite my customers, people who buy my cars, to come and experience this more immersive virtual digital experience within the sandbox? Well, not only that, right? Hopefully you will also benefit from our existing community. Uh, we might, we likely will run events with sand as an award for players. So there's many ways. The idea is, yes, you connect to your existing fans through this, but also we bring you new fans uh, that are very particular, very interested thing, that have uh, are cutting edge as far as tech and that are globally distributed, particularly in Asia and in the United States. Okay, so there's two entry points. Like if I'm, again, a car company, I would probably invite my customers, maybe my prospects, through some link or something to go directly into my land, but then once you're in the sandbox, you can kind of roam around and skip around between different lands? Yes, so then once you finish with an experience, you're free to go experience more. Some people decide, for example, to just focus on a few experiences that they really like and re-engage over and over. This is most likely for games or if you are you know, a super passionate about uh, a, a certain museum and you want to keep revisiting. But otherwise, yes, you skip from one to the other. Yeah, I, I'm starting to get the idea here because when, when uh, here in the U.S. Uh, in a lot of major metropolitan areas, there's something that's called the automobile mile. And for some reason, a bunch of car dealerships have decided that they're going to build themselves all within like, you know, 10 city blocks of each other. And so, you know, you've got Chevrolet and you've got Toyota and you've got Mazda, they're all next door to each other. It may not be related to each other in any way, but people will go to this area and kind of roam around when they're shopping for a car. So it sounds to me like the, uh, the you know, these plots of land and sandbox that they have essentially, uh, you know, you're creating the virtual version of this where people can roam around. So this goes back to that point that you made is it's not only for the customers of the brand, but it's also for people who might be wandering around and it'd be a means of introducing new people to the brand if they're coming from a neighboring plot. Yeah, I agree. And also maybe you and I uh, believe that a plot of land tied to uh, Warner Music is going to be particularly valuable. So we want to buy in that area, even if we have nothing to do with music, right? <laughs> so it's the same sort of rules of real estate, the high price real estate, uh, I'm assuming, if somebody's, because you said the land comes as an NFT, so that means that if I own a piece of land as an NFT, I can actually sell it on the secondary market. My land, if it happens to be next to Warner Brothers, might be more valuable than land that's next to some brand that nobody's ever heard of. Exactly, it will get more visibility and also as the sandbox evolve as a platform and as a tool, it's likely gonna gain more features. Okay. 
lots of assets. The land itself is an NFT. You talked about avatars. I'm assuming like if there's games or, you know, art exhibits, the items within those games, you know, weapons or the art hanging on the wall can be NFTs as well. Uh, they are sold on the primary market when, when the land is first established or the experience is first established, then that stuff can be sold on the secondary market. So this all requires public blockchain. If it's NFTs, what chain are you guys on? Uh, we're on layer two on Polygon. You're on Polygon. Okay, great. So this now, now do people, can they bring their own wallets? Do you offer a wallet for them? How does that work? Uh, it's it, you need uh, uh, to be you can connect a variety of wallet to that your sandbox account. Okay, so people have to bring their own wallets, and uh, once they do that, that's how they would engage. And do, do they have? Uh, do you have a marketplace to where people can sell all this stuff on the secondary market, or do they have to go? outside of the platform to sell their NFTs uh, on the secondary market, like something like OpenSea? Yeah, on the secondary market, you'd have to go outside of the platform for our primary sales that they are run within the platform. We're also trying to make it as easy and accessible as possible for new users. So we're trying to make the friction that comes by registering with the wallet as low as possible. Okay. You mentioned uh, Lacoste is one of the big brands that uh, works, ha has land in, in the sandbox. Who are some other of the big brands that are out there? Um, Gucci, Steve Aoki, Snoop Dogg, uh, Warner Music, uh, uh, the Skybound and the Walking Dead, you name it. We have, I believe, around 400 uh, partners today across artists, museum, uh, uh, big companies uh, where we, we are, I think that brands and personality find us as a great entry point into the idea of the metaverse both for our community because I believe our team are really good at onboarding them and really pay attention to the quality of the experience that is built and because they believe in the long-term project. And is there always land for sale like on the primary market or do you like coordinate sales once every six months or something like, like like or like if I went today if I ran some big brand and I wanted to get some land is there do I have to go buy it on the secondary market or do, do I go to you and will you build me a new block we run about a sale about um, every month month and a half for now but the land are finite so it won't last forever I'd, I'd go right now <laughs> well, the land is finite you guys are going to put a cap on it and after that so go go now because if you get some land now and there's a finite amount of it it could go up in price okay well listen uh, Nibo, uh nicola sebastian chief content officer there at the sandbox thanks very much for joining us on the blockchain journal podcast thank you so much so uh, if you want to find more videos like this one or you want to connect with Sebastian, just hang on. I'm going to show some QR codes at the end of this video that will help you connect with Blockchain Journal, not only our website, but our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash at Blockchain Journal. And also there'll be some QR codes to connect with Sebastian and learn more about the Sandbox. Thanks for joining us. and We'll see you on the next video.